Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and joining us once again. If you like what you see here and you haven't done so already, definitely hit subscribe, the bell notification, all that good stuff. Also, if you're interested in merch or cool stuff and ways to support the show, check out the description down below. But all that aside today, we're just gonna have a blast because we're checking out a new record player and anytime we're unboxing and reviewing a new record player, I smile because that's fun. That's the most fun thing to do. So let's jump right into it, you guys. Welcome to Recordology. This thing is absolutely massive. So this is really unique. And I first saw this at CES last year. That's starting to feel like a real long time ago. But the one I found on display up there was a dummy model. All the buttons weren't real. It looked real, but it wasn't real. So that was really interesting. So I remember this. I remember thinking, oh, that's a cool design. It, it is using the off-the-shelf you know, record player mechanism that, you know, is out there for, you know, in various forms and fashions, but the overall design is very unique, the tape player, all that good stuff. So I'm excited to see it. Now I'm going to insert a clip here of us encountering this device up at CES just for the fun of it. A lot of these products were functioning record players. Some of them weren't like this one is a prototype unit. They actually gave us permission later to go back and film. Really cool. Just really cool designs. So here's a look at the box. It's pretty handsome, I think, actually. They've got the imagery around the outside edge. It's got a cool, it's got a cool mid-century look, I think. I think it's unique. So it's three speeds, pitch adjustment, and uh, yeah, it should be really cool. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we can find. All right, let's go ahead and open her up. And true to form, I did it upside down. Just wouldn't be recordology if I didn't open the box upside down. I think it's big. <laughs> it is hefty. Okay, let's take the foam off. In the box, we've got the manual. Hold on to that. Definitely not your average run of the mill record player. This is like a entertainment console it's got a cool sort of 60s look to it i think Gonna take off the plug protector i already removed the twisty tie it's a plastic strip across the midsection here to kind of hold things together little bits of tape here and there the oh so satisfying removal of the cling wrap from the dust cover there's a piece of tape over here by the cassette door mechanism. All right, let's start on the bottom here. I'm interested to find uh, wood paneling or at least a laminate under there. It looks pretty good. And we have pitch control adjust for the record player. I do not see that unless it's hiding under the label. I kind of doubt it. And sort of these rubberized, I don't even call those feet, just kind of stickers right there. Turntable's got the foam block there and a little piece of tape protecting the 45 adapter. No twisty tie on here, which is interesting. Before we get too far into the turntable, let's look around back. Back panel's pretty simple. You got the plug down there, FM antenna. You do have a line output, aux input, and headphone output. I just think it's annoying when they put the aux in and the headphone out on the back, but say la vie. Hey, let's kick the tires a little bit. First thing I want to do is find out if this is a diamond stylus or if this is a sapphire one. Definitely looks like a sapphire, but the good news is it does have a metal cantilever and a rubberized boot. So that is totally fine to get you started. And you can upgrade to diamond for the longer longevity of the stylus, the longer life, but the sound quality should be just fine. The next thing is let's go ahead and test the tracking force. It does have the cueing lever, which I do appreciate. You may look at that and say, wow, that's not too much to get excited about. My first couple turntables didn't have that. So that actually is a feature that I look at fondly. Okay, let's lower down. And I'm pushing down back here to make sure that the full weight of the tone arm is indeed pressing down on the gauge. So we're at 5.6 grams and that's absolutely fine. 
In fact, that's the recommended range, five to six grams for these cartridges, these ceramic cartridges. Cool, now let's look at the tape player. I think the way they've incorporated the cassette player in here is really, really cool. So I'm excited to see how all this works. It's got an auto stop, basic transport controls. It does record. I know you can record from the radio to tape. I don't know if you can record from record player to tape. We'll have to try that out. Let's go ahead and eject here. Nice, slow. That's an interesting thing. That's metal. I'm, I was expecting that. To, is that metal? It's hard to tell. Usually you can tell by if it's really cold. Hard to tell. But let's look at what really matters, and that is the head mechanism. And what to my wondering eyes do appear, my friends? That is a stereo head. That is super rare these days, so that is really great. Hats off to Jensen just for that alone. And you can see the blue erase head there, pretty common. So that's excellent. So we do have a full stereo head on there. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and find out how she sounds and how she works. So we've got our function switch down here. I'm gonna start by switching it to AM radio. Cool, I love how that lights up, awesome. Now it says on the box, analog tuning dial, but you and I are gonna to wanna to find out, is it truly an analog radio tuner or is it digital? Probably digital, but let's find out. Here we go. Attention. It's definitely a digital tuner, which is okay. It just is what it is. It's got a nice, slow tuning action and a good drag. The sound is very, very warm, and there is a tone control, so let's go up to high versus low. Doesn't change it that much. A little bit. I kind of prefer it on the high end there. Turn this back down. The microphone is not pointed at the speaker, um, so you'll have to take my word for it. The sound is warm. It's, it is booming. It's got plenty of amplification. Now let's go to FM. Oops. FM. I went between, that's why it shut off there. Indy 1023 is able to be observed on radio possible. Wow. The sound quality is amazing. Wow. This is very impressive. The sound quality is rich. It's booming. It's filling up a medium-sized room very adequately. It does not have that tinny sound. Oops, just kick the box. It uh, has a nice, full, warm, rich sound. I, you know, usually with novelty units, all-in-ones, you're not expecting that super rich sound. But this one has it. This one has it. Now, let's check out the record player. Now, what you're looking at is not compression, although I can't imagine that compression on YouTube would help this, but this is actually the wood grain, and these are laminates, so it's essentially like a, a silk screen, not a silk screen, but like a picture, a thin layer of something wrapped on cheaper MDF or particle board, and as you can see where I'm at here, I'm right by the front edge, oh, focus, anyway, um, it almost looks like out of focus wood grain, which is kind of trippy to look at, honestly. It's not as bad over here, but it's like over here, it's kind of blurry looking. That's just really kind of bizarre. I'm just now noticing that. Wow, that's weird. Okay, so when it comes to the record player itself, you may be looking at this and saying, yeah, yeah, it's a typical Skywind type mechanism. We've seen it a million times before, and you have, or a variant thereof. However, these can sound quite good if the impedance is matched properly from the cartridge into the amplifier of the unit. So we're not going to find out until we open it up. The suitcase players, first gen cruisers and things of that nature were sort of infamous for having mismatched impedance. And that gives it that thin sound that people complain about a lot. However, a number of manufacturers have been uh, correctly matching impedance of these cartridges and these mechanisms and yielding 
the full potential of sound quality that you can really get out of them. So without further ado, let's spin a record on it. People just don't understand why certain things sound the way they do or why things work or don't work the way they do, which is unfortunate. It leads a lot of people to have a misunderstanding on equipment like this. And I'm talking about people that are pretty well versed in vinyl and audio, but they may look at this mechanism and say, oh, that's a cheap mechanism. That's not gonna sound good. When that's not really the case, it's really about the impedance mismatch or lack thereof. Okay, so I ran the carbon fiber just to run off some static. Some people like to do it like that. Others are like, no, what you gotta do is go towards the center, touch it to that spindle and ground it out. I kind of do both usually, it seems to work. So here we go. We are going to play a record, and hopefully this, I'll, you'll be able to tell, tell right away if the impedance is correct. Does it sound rich? Does it sound full like the radio did? Or does it sound noticeably thinner? So let's find out in real time. Here we go. Okay, that was, the tone was up pretty high, so I'm gonna rotate that back down to the left. Maybe that's only for the record player. Sounds pretty good. At first I was thinking maybe it wasn't matched properly because it sounded kind of thin, but then when I rotated this tone control back down to the left, it sounded a lot better. That sounds good. It's definitely got that harsher, more punchy sound that a ceramic has versus a magnetic cartridge, but it's uh, not bad at all. And again, I wanna reiterate this because I get questions daily. If your record player is skipping, make sure you're pushing down on this lift after you lower the record, this little piece of plastic that lifts up the tone arm. Because sometimes when you lower this, it lowers partially, but not all the way. So you wanna make sure that you fully push that down, that usually fixes it. It's definitely stereo too. I am getting stereo imaging. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna test the recording. While we got a record on here, I'm gonna put in yield test tape and let's find out whether or not we can actually record from vinyl on to cassette. So I'm just gonna leave it in vinyl record playing mode. One touch recording. Let's see what happens. Shouldn't matter what the volume is set out here. It should have an automatic gain control. So far I'm impressed. This is cool. This would be awesome like in a den or an office. Or if you kind of had a mid-century li living room look, this would be cool. This would also be good for a uh, first time vinyl person from what I can tell so far. You know, it's properly matched impedance for sure. I can now verify that after listening for a minute. Let's go ahead and rewind our tape. Ooh, good, fast, snappy rewind. I'm gonna put this over to off slash tape mode and press play. And let's see if it recorded. It does did. You can definitely notice a good generation loss in quality, that's for sure. Now, just to verify that what I said earlier was right, I'm going to put this back on radio mode and try to record off the radio. Next great journey of life. You okay. get to do what you love. With the so, turn the volume down a little bit. I love the light up uh, dial over here. Let's scoot over here now. I don't know, I'm just easily pleased by that kind of stuff. I'm, things that light up, flashy things, like a squirrel. I'm drawn to flashy, shiny things. Okay, let's go ahead and rewind, go back to tape mode, and play that back. Hopefully that works too. It does, cool. Do you know if your money's going to last? Awesome. So, I guess the last, I don't wanna, does this have Bluetooth? It does have pitch adjust too. Let's go while we're got, while we have the record on there still. Let's go ahead and spin this up one more time. And 
play with the pitch adjust. Slower. And faster, cool. And the mid-range sounds about where it should. So if we were to get out the strobe and find inconsistencies, we can make adjustments. That's huge, you guys. That is huge. This would be a great record player for you guys. I really think this is a good one. This is a great unit. I love it. And for playing 78s, you get a 78 stylus on there, you're good to go. You could get a wide groove stylus on there. This would be so nice to have that pitch control. So you could kind of adjust up for 80 RPM discs and down for 78 RPM discs. Really, really cool. So did I see Bluetooth? I don't think it has Bluetooth. Oh, it does have a stereo indicator for the radio. That's cool. Okay, so it does have the line input control too, which I'm assuming you could probably record to tape as well, but I'm not gonna test that out today. We'll skip that. But check this out, guys. This cool, cool tape made for me by Fartamark on a Type 2 high bias Sony UX tape. This is, my friends, the Walkman 1979 demo tape, recreated. So this should make for a really good test tape for a pre-recording test on the tape player. And let's give it a listen. It sounds really good. I'm really impressed. And again, I'm just testing acoustically in the room but, you know, yeah, take my word for it. You can hear it as well. It's sort of echoey in here, I know. I'm in my upscale echoey kitchen, as somebody once called it. But at the same time, this is a real-world use case. You know what I mean? It's a real-world use case. Let's go ahead and listen. Play the tone control. Tone control seems to only work for the record player, which is interesting. Okay guys, so I'm not gonna do a line input test on this because I kind of saved those for the higher end units, the ones with the magnetic cartridges where you can really hear a major difference. But for this, I think what would be a really cool test is a stereo in the room audio test. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch from the vocal mic to my front firing stereo audio mics and you're gonna get a full stereo representation pointed right at the device and be able to hear it in its full glory. So here we go. So that's going to do it. I highly recommend this unit. I was pleasantly surprised. Not that I didn't think it would be good, but you never know with a novelty unit and something that's kind of brand new like this, how they're going to engineer it. And they've done a fantastic job. This unit is beautiful to look at. It is quality built. It sounds great. It's not going to compete with your SL1200 Technics decks. It's not intended to do that. I always have to say that because somebody will come on here, well, it's nothing compared to my Technics deck. It's not supposed to. You're comparing a tricycle to a Mercedes-Benz. You know what I mean? It's a different market. But for what it is, this is very good. And it's a great starting point. It's a beautiful thing to look at, a piece of furniture. The blurriness over here was a little weird, but I'm sure that those are different grain per unit, I'm guessing. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. Thumbs up. Link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Okay, and that's gonna do it for today. If you wanna snag one of these for your very own, click on the link in the description below. But that's gonna do it for today, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.